What's going on, guys? I am Simple Simon, and today we're going to be talking about Oz Comic Con and the weekend that was last weekend with some of my fellow Aussie creators. Um, before I bring them on, though, for anyone watching on the replay, uh, make sure you check out all the boys. Uh, their YouTube channels and Instagrams are all in the description below. All right, let's bring them on one by one. First is my buddy. He's no stranger to the simple verse. It's Matt's party. What's going on? Not a lot, mate. Not a lot. I'm ready to do this. Uh, I'm trying to get my hours up. That's why I need, to, I need some stream ideas. So. And then another 2,000 right. hours like Russ. Yeah. No, I'm only about 1,000 a a thousand hours off. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of hours. All right. Next, I'm going to bring in for the first time. He's on time. <laughs> What's going on, fellas? Well, I think you're the only person who's ever been late to collectible show and tell. I think oh, some people like literally did buzzer beaters, but you were literally we had to start the show. Without yeah, even, even ones that he calls in at the last minute for a fill in because somebody's cancelled, still not late. <laughs> hey, I'm one for one. All right, fifty <laughs> percent. All right, and my last guest for the first time to the simple verse. Please welcome Omnibo. Thank you very much for the invite. I'm pumped to be here. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'll just quickly do a little chat shout out to Bailey Roth. Good vibes <laughs> only. <laughs> That's my niece. Okay, I was wondering. I, I was like, hmm, Roth. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, <laughs> in life and early, I don't know if they're still there. And of course, we've got Daddy Whack who dropped in as well. All right. So, yeah, I just figured we'd just talk about uh, last weekend and stuff because obviously you guys all went and maybe we'd show you some stuff as well. But, uh, even if you so, only lasted half a day like we did. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, um, like I, I saw, um, have you met Dragon at Big City? Yeah. Yeah, so he was there and I think he was only there for maybe, it had to be less than two hours. And then that's mm. when I was like, he's like, I've had enough, I'm out of here. And that was on the Sunday too, so. Yeah, like yeah, it was, Saturday and, and that, that's that's what I said, because Beck and I got in before doors opened. We got in about 8.30 and... We thought, oh, yeah, it's nice nice and spaced out. Yeah, it's not too bad or whatever like that. The first half an hour was all right. And then all of a sudden it was just bang. The lines just flooded in. And I was already like, I'd already checked out where all the comic book stalls were, checked out where all the artists were, said hello to everybody. And I'm like, oh, crap, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. I'm like, shit, I better get some footage. I'm like holding the phone like above my head trying to get footage. And I'm like... 10 seconds here, five seconds there. And I'm like, nah, I'm done. I went, I went oh. and blew all my money in the first two hours and I was, and we were out by lunchtime. Did you not have to help pack up as well? No, where we actually got out of it. We, we offered to, but um, we weren't needed. So, hey, Alex. Um, what time did you get there, Matt, on the Saturday? Uh, it was about 10 o'clock. The queue was Cause... right up the doors, but we just just walked right into the middle of the queue and just jumped it. This guy, yeah, because I got there. We walked across, and I bumped into a dude I knew, and he's like, "Dude, try to go into the center center because this line's crazy." It was coming all the way out onto the mm. onto the main road, mm. and I was like, "Dude, I got a media pass. I'm skipping that shit." And there was this yeah. lady at the front who was like telling everyone walking towards the doors, going. I was Comic Con over there. I was Comic Con over there. And then when she turned to tell some kids, I was Comic Con line over there, we just bolted in there. Because so we had to pick up the media passes. Uh, and that took a while, but then we eventually got there. But yeah, it was pretty sweet skipping that line. But apparently, people that were in it got through it pretty quickly anyway. So uh, the line moved quick. Like, but yeah, we just jumped it halfway. I know it's naughty, but yeah, people knew Exhibition Center. It's, you know, Comic Con was the start. It was right at the doors where Crown were. And we're like, yeah, nah. <laughs> No chance. Uh, did you get there early on the Sunday, Bo? I got there, yeah, somewhere about 10, 11 o'clock. I can't actually remember exactly when, but I, it still blows my mind how people attempt to go to Comic-Con without pre-purchasing their tickets. Like, mm. you know, I don't know why you're going to prepare to spend your time in line for hours trying to get in. You know, just get your tickets before. Well, Saturday, well, I think, was sold out. But before, there before was, the doors it was sold out. But they were selling tickets at the door too, and I don't think yeah, that was supposed to be. about one o'clock. I think. Yeah, I had a friend who couldn't get in. Yeah, that's a 
but that it was it was ridiculous on the Saturday. Oh mate, like, you couldn't. Oh, I t- my friend was gonna come, but she had a pram. Like she's got a pram. I I rang her up. I said, "Mon, mate, oh, you are so lucky you didn't come because there was no way you're gonna get through with a pram. It was just you were like yeah. this the whole way. It yeah, was it just of a insane. General admission at like a stadium concert. <laughs> 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 Yeah. And and once once we get to the uh, all I might as well say it now anyway, it was, as I said it was about lunchtime when we were like, you know, it probably would have been about eleven eleven thirty I reckon. And we're like, are you hungry? Yep, we, we're hungry. We'll go get some food because we raced in there to try and get in there before the doors open, so we didn't have to deal with all the crap. And we went to where all the food trucks were, and we went. <laughs> I know. Hell no. Every single one of them was like a hundred people deep oh. at like eleven o'clock, and I'm like, no way in hell. Let's just grab Maccas on the way home. Yeah. Really, on the Saturday, it was completely empty. <laughs> it's funny no, because when we when we line. went, it was about eleven eleven thirty. It was chockers. Everything was like a hundred deep. There were some big lines. Like to get a hot dog, it was it was a massive line. But mm. considering how jam packed it was, walking down the aisles looking at stalls, how and then you get to the food court bit, and Maybe. there's like. It was like you could fit three JB Hi-Fi's in that food court space. Yeah. It was mm. ridiculous how much space they had there and how crammed everyone is was. And on both on both ends, there was so much space. I, I don't think they. The one, the one thing I did like though is they put a lot more tables and chairs out because usually at that canteen sort of area, they usually just have the the pre ones that are already there, and that's like twenty tables and that's it. It looked like they had a hell of a lot more seating and chairs and stuff for people to actually sit down. Oh, uh, speak of the devil. He's in the chat. I had to leave quick. Too many people. <laughs> I'm that boy's <laughs> <myself. laughs> Yeah, so he was, uh, yeah, Dragon was there literally, I don't know. How long you reckon Dragon? You were, an hour? Because I saw him and then I bumped into him at a comic at a comic stall. And then next thing you know, you see him again. He's like, we're out. We're done. Screw this mm. place. And some of the, com- like there was that one comic shop, man. The prices were insane. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that too. Uh, there was um, there was there was somewhere like some omnibuses, for example, because that's obviously what I'm looking for. The prices were just insane, absolutely insane. You know, I, but I'm I'm glad to see that the comic stalls are actually coming back hmm. because it's been like I've been going to cons in Melbourne for shit probably 15 years or more, and like I've been you know obviously I've been to. You know, um, the old exhibition building, obviously the new one now, which is where Oz is now, obviously the showgrounds and a few other things. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And you used to be able to walk into a Comic-Con and there'd be like 20 different comic sellers, whether it be trades, floppies or or whichever. Yeah. And then I've noticed over the last couple of years, you're lucky to get one or two. Well, this one was actually pretty... It was pretty good this year. I feel like there was maybe five stores. There was five or six. Because there was, what? There was, yeah, Tim was there. Bruce was there. James was there. The guy from Uh, Canberra was cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, James. The other James, yeah, Penny from Canberra. And this new one called Seb's. So there was five that I saw. And Kings, if you want to uh, call Kings. Yeah, well, Kings. Yeah, Kings counts, yeah. Um, So That disgusts me, Lee. Kings was the only only one. had Kings comics. So you Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. Honest, and and I wouldn't buy off Kings anyway because they're ridiculously expensive. Yeah, and that was actually Kings was actually the one that I was referring to. I just didn't want to nail them with the omnibuses, but you know, an omnibus that's worth about 150 bucks that was selling for like 250. It mm. was just ridiculous. Do you think they jack prices up for the cons? Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent They're 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 trying to they're trying to learn off the American cons, like the big they, American cons. When I went to Sydney, it. when I went to Sydney, the Usagi book there. Was uh, sixty nine dollars at Sydney, and then at Comic Con when I had a look, so I got it for Amazon for forty dollars, and then when I went and had a look at Kings, it was seventy nine at Oz Comic Con, so I jacked it up by ten bucks. Yeah, that would have been fun yeah. back then. Ninety four. I couldn't even great. shop in half the stores because I was so busy. You couldn't like you couldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go in. Uh, there uh, were lots of so annoying. independent creators. There was definitely uh, independent creators. Uh, in like artist alley and stuff no, like no, that. no internationals, all all Aussie grown. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. They need it like Oz Com- artist gallery needs to be separate, like Supernova does, because a Supernova lot of is so... getting so much popular. I think it's so much better. It's cool that you can because you're switching, you're going from one building to the next. 
It just yeah. creates. I don't know. It's, it's so much better at Supernova but, the way they. But there's a there's a problem with that coming from knowing a lot of the stall holders. All the stall holders lose money because what happens is at Supernova, because all the all the autographs and photos and all the artist alley is in the separate building. Everybody's spending most of their time and money over there, and not on the stall. Uh, like on the main no, shop cele- celebrities are normally with the stalls and artist alley is artist alley not in supernova no yes it is the, yeah, the only Matt. celebrities well, i didn't, in I didn't go, don't forget i probably i'm talking pre-covid i haven't been to one during COVID. Nah, it's time. always i've it's always been like the comic creators like tom taylor and that used to yeah, be comic creators will be in artist alley nah see comic creators used to be with the celebrities tom taylor's always been in that main hall with all the other people that's that's going back a, a long time, but when but this was that was when they because when they separated the buildings, all of the um, all of the artists and the photos and celebrities and that went over to that other building, and that's and that's and that's why all the a lot of the people would not go to Supernova anymore, like all the storeholders, because of everybody oh, yeah, spending right. their time and money over there. Yeah, I remember that guy from back. What's his name? Back to the Future. Now I remember that that they used to be where the artist gallery was, the yeah. celebrities. So I remember lining up for him for a while. But yeah, like I haven't been to because we've had what one or two supernovas during COVID. Yeah, two. two. Yeah, I, I didn't. We didn't go to either. So the, the first one was um, actually, you know what? We've technically had three because the first one was during the COVID. We just first had one happened lockdown. just before lockdowns happened. Pretty yeah, because yeah. I, I, I was at that one because that was the one that um, that Kevin Eastman was at. I'm pretty sure Ooh, both what? of them did because I remember thinking to myself how lucky we were that we could go to Supernova and then it was like the next day or a week. It was locked later, in, yeah. Everything was locked yeah, because I was, I was talking to um, Freddie Williams a couple of days after Melbourne and uh, – sorry, no, it was after the next weekend because they went up to Brisbane or Gold Coast, I think, for the second weekend. And I was speaking to him and he's like, I, it took him about four days to get out of the country after the con had finished because everything started getting locked down and – Flights are getting cancelled and all sorts of things. So yeah, it was really it was really nuts. Um, yeah, because I remember the first one out of lockdown for Supernova, they had everything in the one building, so there was yeah, no that one. Would have been most of the yeah, that was went, that was go. bizarre. And then this mm-hmm. year they split it up again, which was really good. They didn't have it in that old building; they had it in the um that one that's kind of in the middle. Oh, the um. The, like the panel, the panel room, kind of like as you come in, as you come into the yeah. place, it's on the right yeah. there. So, um, so I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Sunday wasn't like in the morning. Sunday was kind of quiet in the morning, but by the time I got to the afternoon, it was truckers again. Oh, it was yeah. absolutely freaking packed, yeah. man. Like I ended up leaving simply because. I just couldn't be bothered dealing with so many people. Hey, dig a gym. Um, yeah, and I had to put up with it for the whole day. Like the second day, I think me and Sarah left at about 2.30, but then we went and got food and then she was like, uh, uh, I think I really want to get that statue. So we went back in um, till about four probably. So Yeah, once, once, most times, once I've blown my money, that's it for me. I did that. I blow my money in the first two hours. I was I was done. Yeah. <laughs> I liked how I did this this year because, like, I think last like Supernova, for example, I went both days, and I was just doing interviews both days. Well, this time I did interviews one day, and then Sunday I did the vlog with Sarah. And I think I much prefer that. I think that's a better mm. way to go because I stress yeah, out instead of, instead of trying to cram time. it all into one day. In other words, yeah, yeah, and I kind of just Saturday is just like I kind of like take it as like work, consider it as work, and then Sunday I can hang out and just film whatever random footage and actually yeah, that's, enjoy probably day. that's probably a Sorry? good idea yeah i think i think because it was a last comic con i only went to one day and i was just all day it was just in my head about the video i was like well, no one wants to interview and you know all this sort of stuff so so did anything good happen i got a really yeah, good I'm- interview with tom taylor um matt's buddy oh, quite impressed with your footage actually simon because when i walked in there i said to myself you know obviously having my own youtube channel um i want to record and create and blah 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 i think very similar to mad spidey but after you end up recording a few things you're just like mate you just can't be bothered because you're yeah you're like you're like this holding the camera above your head yeah. trying to bloody get stuff it's just i, I think just I, like, 
I think I got about a minute and a half full of footage. Yeah. And, and, I I got about, it, and I just chucked it all together. And that was it. And I got about five minutes, but yet five minutes is just simply watching the crowds walk around. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother uploading this because no one's going to give a shit. And then I look at Simon's channel and he's got part one, part two trailer. And it's, <laughs> and it's actually interesting stuff to watch as well. So props to you, man. I am uh, yeah. very dedicated to the craft. <laughs> My mate um got real lucky. He... He was talking to Nicholas Scott. Now, he's an artist, and he's a really good artist, and he was no jokes with Nicholas Scott for an hour chatting, an hour. She ended up um, telling him because he showed her his face, uh, his Instagram. So she said, add me on Instagram, and she was explaining how she got into the game for him. Mm. So now next she wants him to organize a portfolio to send into her. So that was something good for my mate, not really for me, but then again, I'm going to be his personal assistant when he's at the cons, so. I'll be going to get his coffees and pies and stuff. Yeah. So it works out when he goes to Oscar, uh, bloody San Diego Comic-Con. Mm. If, 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 you get Nicola, if you can get Nicola alone, yeah, if you hey. get Nicola alone, she'll talk your ear off for hours. Yeah, she's an awesome woman, man. Mm. I love, she's amazing. Mm. What about Tom? Nah, who cares about Tom? <laughs> he was actually all right this year. He was Tom? a bit... He, he, I, I tell you, listen, with Tom, I think his popularity is starting to get to his head. Personally yeah. speaking. Because Tom, you Tom, went to his favorite interview. <laughs> no, no, because I uh, like what I do is when I go get my signature from the the comic creators, I always buy something because I feel bad, you know what I mean, just getting them to sign a book. So Nicholas Scott, which I'll show, I bought some stuff. I bought some stuff for Andrew Constant. And then Tom Taylor had like all the books, but I've got them all in single issues. And I asked him about the Neverland free comic day issue that he had there. Oh, no, you only get that if you buy all the books. And I'm like, yeah, but if you buy one of the books. And I was like, but I've got them all in single issues. Oh, yeah, okay, in that point. And I was like, are you serious, dude? Like, fuck. Plus, those books are overpriced as well. Um, I've been wanting to... I've been wanting to pick up uh, Superman, uh, Son of Kal El, or whatever it is that he wrote, the hardcover. Um, and he and they had a price of fifty bucks. And it's how much did he have for? Fifty bucks. He he actually sold out of them, right? So on the day one, because I spoke to him right at the end of the day, he was like, he ran out of books, so he had to go to Kings and buy a whole stack of them um, to keep selling them. So that's why the, on the Sunday, me and Sarah went there first thing because she wanted to get. A son of KLL signed by him. So we got went there first thing to get a team on the Sunday. But um Andy you leave my best friend away. Hey, Tom Tom Taylor brought us together, Matt. He did. He did, actually. <laughs> he brought you, me, me and Matt. Me and Matt are having me and Matt are having back and forth in the comments section of a of a whack comics post. And uh, and Tom Ta- he's like he's like fuck Tom Taylor and I was like fuck you he's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> we had a domestic. <laughs> but Andrew Constant is hands down the great. I um when I went up to him I shit you know this is what he said. I was like like I was like, I get really nervous when I ask like I'm like a little kid you know what I mean I like yeah, get mm-hmm. real nervous and he turns to me and goes hey aren't you the guy that threatened to punch me in the face on Instagram and I'm like what. If he just started shitting around, joking like that. And I was like, no, no, you shared one of my Nightwing posts once from Fear State. He goes, oh, no, no, I reckon you're that smart ass saying you're going to punch me in the face. You're going to do it now or what? And I just like, he's like, man, I'm just fucking dear. And I was like, oh, man, I swear I thought. A little he, he's a good guy. He's it funny. Like- hmm. <laughs> hey, it it does sound, does sound like you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. No, he was cool. He was cool. But did you, I don't know about you guys. Was there anyone in the line for the celebrities? Because every time I walked past there, I didn't say one person in the line. There was, there was, there was like four celebrities. How many celebrities were there? It looked like yeah. there was like five celebrities. I didn't, I didn't even notice where the celebrities were. <laughs> they were down right the other end. I think the most famous names out of every celebrity that was there is um, the, Lu- the Lucifer cast. Yeah, the they were. Yeah, Amy Garcia and that other bloke. Is Amy, no, Amy yeah. Garcia. Is that Amy Garcia of Lucifer? Or was she yeah, from? yeah, yeah, yeah. She's from Lucifer. Yeah, yeah, she's she plays um the forensic chick. Yeah, the yeah. Nerd. Um, yeah. Every time I walk past it, there was not one person in the line. I swear, yeah. like they're just sitting there, like playing with their pens. Mm. So and that the, was the other the other guy 11. that plays the the ex husband, who's another cop, but he yeah. he was in True Blood as well. Yeah. Um. He was yeah, because they did a pan- Those guys did a panel. 
as I was interviewing, because I was doing some of my interviews right near that stage, and they were so loud when the Lucifer guys came out. Yeah. Yeah, because the I'm other the other them. one, the other big name was going to be Rachel Scarston or whichever, and um, and she ended up cancelling because she got COVID. Yeah, yeah. I saw her on the Instagram. Mm. The panel yeah, for Tom guy, Taylor and Nicholas Scott was good. And they you had, had that guy from Spider-Man that no one gave a shit about as well, I think. Isn't, isn't he like in <laughs> Neighbours always, or something at the moment? He's always there. He was at nah, Super nah. Well. I don't think it was Neighbours. That was the other bloke. He was. It looks that, like the bloody guy that's on Neighbours at the moment. That's what I said to my mate when I walked past. I go, hey, that guy's from Spider-Man. So like, which character? And I have to explain, you know, you know, the one that walks in when he's got his pants down and he's like trying to get with MJ? Oh, yeah. that bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, dick, that, that dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I would have rather seen Flash Thompson. I don't even care about him. Now, I think a lot of celebrities yeah. would be filming now because everything would have been pushed into post production because of COVID. Everyone would be flat out now. All the big yeah. names. So I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, hold a grudge not getting good talent down because it's just going to be hard at the moment. Everyone will be filming. I think yeah. it's the first con that, um, because I think the last couple of years after lockdown. The last couple of cons, people were still hesitant to go out. Like Mad Spidey wouldn't go to. Yeah, a we 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 didn't. That's why I said we didn't go to. The two I think this is the first one where people are like, "Let's go," sort of thing. Mm. Which well, is we went I, to we went to um, Oz when it was in December, uh, but we only went for like the last hour because we were doing clothes, didn't have much money, so we're like, "We'll just go have a quick look around on the Sunday for the last hour," and, and that was about it. So. You know, but uh, yeah, like Beck and I both pretty much said, look, you know, the other two supers is just like, no, nah, we're not, not that we were scared to go out because, you know, I've been working out, out in, you know, out in the community, I suppose you could say, like all during COVID, like I was never stuck at home or anything like that. So it didn't phase me, but we were just like, don't really want to be in a crammed area when COVID so easily. And so, you know, it's around oh. a lot. After the last, after Supernova this year, I got super sick. I didn't get COVID, but I was sick for a week, mm. real bad. You got the uh, con crud, as a lot of the artists like to call it. Convid. Mm. One of the things I was impressed with was uh, actually how much I wanted to buy. Um, because mm. going back 10 years ago, you know, I used to rock up with, you know, let's say 500 bucks willing to spend at Comic Con, and I would. Um, but the last five years or so, <laughs> I'm just saying the last five years or so, though, I haven't been able to buy anything because there's just nothing that's interested me. Um, so how, much, I, how much money did you rock up with this year then? Um, I Ten really, years on. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really – see, that, that actually brings me to another point. I didn't actually bring any cash. I just brought my card and I said, I've got enough money to be able to buy things this year. Let, let's go walk around and have a look. And I, and there was there was so much that I, I, I wanted to buy. I, obviously, I've got more control – these days, and I don't just buy anything that I want. Control. What's that word mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I was quite, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, that if things were cheaper, I probably would have bought a hell of a lot more than I did. I only walked away with three things. Um, but yeah, I, I was I was quite impressed with that. Yeah, I was spewing. I seen a um the first appearance, first cover appearance of uh, what's his name, Calvin, um, Earth Two Superman, that uh, Tom Taylor and Nicholas Scott created. Yeah. And it was a pre appearance cover. And it was like 40 bucks. I'm like, shit, should I go? Should I get it? Should I get it? Should I go get them to sign it? I said, I'll do a lap and then I'll come back. And then did a lap and lo and behold, was, somebody bought it. It was gone. <laughs> it was gone. And I was like, damn, I should have just did it. But yeah, there was a lot of things. They did have some good things there. Well, with the fact that I didn't have cash on me, um, as uh, you know, I've been going to Comic Cons for. 15 years or I don't even know how long, but it's never been an issue that I haven't had cash. And this time I went around and there was two stalls that I legitimately wanted to buy something and I couldn't because they only accepted cash. And by the time I went to the second stall, um, I said, wow, like there, there was a, there was a Spider-Man um, uh, poster that I really wanted to get. And um, I, I said, I'll be, I'll be back. I'll try to find an ATM. And I was walking around for 10 minutes while everybody, every time that I'd ask, where's an ATM? They kept saying, down that way, down that way, down that way. I was walking around for 10 minutes and eventually I just gave up and I went, screw it. And I just went back into the Comic-Con. There so was just- one There was one on the, so you had to go back out and then you had to go down the hall closer towards the entrance and there was an ATM. Because uh, same thing when, um, when mate Tony 
he was uh, he really wanted to get uh, something signed by that Camillo artist, uh, and he's been talking to him on Instagram back and forth. So uh, he's like, "Oh, I'm Tonestar," and Camillo's like, "Oh, that's you. You always comment on my stuff." So he's like, "Yeah, I want to get this book." So Camillo starts signing it, and then um, uh, Tony's like, "Oh, do you take cards?" He's like, "No." Nah. And Tony's like, oh, like he's already signed the book and stuff. Yeah. So we're like, oh, we'll go find an ATM. So we, it took us a while, but yeah, we got there in the end. But so yeah. with, um, with Andrew and Nicola, they got their F post. I said, oh, I've got cash if you want cash. Oh, yeah, no, we'll take cash. Okay, mate, you got to dodge the tax, man. That's what they do. But yeah, it does suck that a lot of stores didn't have like. Well, yeah. In, in we're in there, we're, you should we're be able to get. You... Hey? It's 2022, mate. You should be able to, if you're selling shit, you should be able to get F-Post. If you want to make money. You can get an app on your phone now that'll do it, you know? So I just I just don't get it. Yeah, you just buy you just buy the little square bloody yeah. pay reader yeah. thing or whatever. Well, so when I go to like a small comic fair, I bring cash because I just expect people. Yeah, that's Because they're just random yeah, people, right, that are like coming out for this comic fair. But uh, at a big con like that, I would have I expected a lot more people to have the cards and things. It's always like cash is king at cons, regardless whether it's big or small. And especially when you're dealing with never happened. <laughs> especially when you're, uh, you know, especially with like me dealing with like comic creators, you know, for the last, you know, fifteen whatever years, they all want cash because they don't want you transferring any money at all because then they've got to claim it going mm. back into the country and, and you know and stuff like that. So if you just give them cash. They'll either spend it here or they'll exchange it or whatever. Have you not picked up an original art piece since that supernova I bumped into you at? That was like when I first sort of just was that even not, we were, we I have not picked in? up a commission at a con since the start of since COVID started. Yeah, like yeah. that's that supernova at the start of I have I have had art delivered to my house, but I have not picked up a con a piece at a con yet since then. Yeah, I think I want to start doing more. Uh, I think I should just start spending my money on like sketch covers with artists. I think that's the way to go. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, it's, like, it's 150 to 200 a pop. Yeah. Like, how good did you watch? Did you see the vlog? Uh, so, Sean's mate. Um, was it his brother? I don't know. Sean's oh, mate. Yeah. That yeah. was awesome. That yeah, artwork was that. absolutely amazing. <laughs> I, I love that he couldn't pronounce any of the names. Yeah, Sean's pretty bad with that. But you know what's funny at the start? I'm like, he opens the book and I'm like, who's that? He's like, Scarecrow. I'm like, I know it's Scarecrow. Who's the artist? And he's like, and he's like, it's John Summer. And I go, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying, it's Summer Reaver. It's not hard to pronounce. Oh, is that who it was? Was that, was that who it was? was yeah, that? it was John Summer Reaver. Yeah. He does the uh, Neverlanders book. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good mate of mine. Cash is king. That's right, Digger Jim. You tell him. <laughs> um, well, do you want to show some stuff that you got? Would you, would you spend last. your money on? You'll go last. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> start with. Uh, I'll start then. I mean, I've already shown my stuff in my haul, but uh, I won't show everything because I didn't really get much anyway. I'll just show the cool things, like from my friend Tom Taylor, who signed it to his bestie. Yeah, that's right. Proof. Right there, that were besties. <laughs> and yeah, I, I wanted to buy a hardcover from him because I he did a remark in Sarah's last year. So I was like, I want him to do a remark in mine. So he do Batman. I got I got that exact same drawing in my Injustice book. <laughs> yeah, but did yours say to my bestie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it says Matt Batman. <laughs> it's it says yours says to the guy who will talk shit about me in the future. <laughs> Um, yeah, other than that, I didn't really pick up any interesting comics. That that was probably the only cool book I picked up, which was Red Sonja's first solo series issue one. Oh, nice! I, I saw that on the Saturday, and then literally I bought it right at the end of Sunday when I was like, I don't. I was it was, it was either between this or Kings had a book that I kind of wanted. They have like a exclusive Batman issue fifty, and it's like a really nice kiss cover. You know, I collect kiss oh, covers, I and I also I also collect Batman issue fifty because that was the first. Floppy that I bought when I went to comic books. So it's like a double whammy, but it was 75 bucks. It was signed by Gillen March as well. And I like Gillen March. So it's like 75 bucks. That's a lot to spend on a book that's a nothing book, right? And then I thought about this for 50 bucks. And and then Sarah tried to convince, she's like, you know what? 
you you collect kiss, kiss covers, you collect Batman Fifty, you should you should get the Sangular March book instead of the Red Sonja. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll do that. And then just when we're on the way to get it, I bump into Sean, and Sean's like, mate, that book's worth nothing. Get the Red Sonja. That will keep going up. And I was like, ah, it's cheaper as well. So I ended up getting the Red Sonja. Yeah, good choice. Uh, and then everything else is just random, like movie adaptation of Red Sonja with Arnie on it. Look at that. Hey, Dragon, you like that book? Yeah. Um, so, oh, you an artist, are you, Dragon? Do a sketch cover for me. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing else really exciting. Got that signed by Tom, which is a nice cover as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good cover. Um, yeah, that's really it. Uh, let's go, Bo. What you got? Uh, I, like I said, I only got three things. Um, first thing I got was uh, they, I can't even remember the place that it was, but they had uh, $10 trades. So I went through them all and I found the last volume of Sinestro that I needed, volume four. Uh, I've never read the series because I wait until I have the complete series before being able to read it. So now that I've got that, I'll be able to read all of that. Uh, the second book, that I've got is one that uh, people in the collected editions community are always going nuts over, saying how great it is. You've got to read it. I'm a big Ed Brubaker fan, so I finally picked up the first hardcover. Right. About time. Get ready for a great ride, mate. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's four, yeah? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you got them all? Yeah, mate. They're the, my oh. favourite. You're going to love right, it. Sweet. Because I don't know the it. order. So I'm going to hit you up and you tell me what the second yeah. one is. I'll get that soon. Um, and the other thing that I got was, uh, a, I don't know if you call it a statue because it's like made out of this plastic sort of thing, but, you know, kind of a statue. I saw it straight away and I went, fuck me, I've got to get that. And it was a venomized Captain That's America. Nice. That's sick. Cool. I just loved that. Um, they had a Doctor Strange one as well, but it wasn't as cool. Um, yeah, I just that one is one of the, you know that's got the little thing that's holding them up. They're annoying sometimes because they keep coming off if you don't get them in there right. Yeah, I think I got it in all right though. I mean, look, you can wobble it around a bit. Yeah, like that's a pressing like, <laughs> I've got one over my shelf and like you just tap it and it just just falls over. You know, it was only it was only like thirty bucks, I think. So <laughs> I went, yeah, why not? I've got a. Uh, um, a, a display cabinet with all my Venom stuff, so I chuck it in that. Yeah, and that's it. That's all I got. Um, you collect floppies as well, right? Because I've seen, uh, I saw your room tour video, I think it was, and you got slabs and all that yeah. sort of stuff. When did you, uh, when, like, do you still buy floppies and stuff? Or? Not really. The only floppies that I buy now is Venom every month, and then the only other single issues that I buy will just be random covers that I think is really cool or, or artist covers that I follow like Del Otto and things like that. Um, but that's really it, man. All of my money really does go to omnibuses and collected editions. And a lot of the stuff I think I saw in your boxes, you have a lot of, like, I guess you went and bought some keys, I think, because you had some. Yeah, um, all of, uh, uh, yeah, so I like to have the very, I like to have first appearances of everything to do with symbiotes, which you wouldn't believe how many issues there are um, when it comes to first appearances of, of symbiotes because people would assume it's just venom and just carnage and but there's there's a lot. So you get that, you get that planet planet of the symbiotes bloody uh, the yeah. one shot and that's got about a million in it. <laughs> yeah. So I've gone and grabbed every single first appearance of a symbiote and I've tried to get them slabbed. And in fact, I'm still missing. Uh, two issues until I have every single first appearance of, of the symbiotes. Uh, but the reason why I don't have those two is because <laughs> they're very expensive now. And, mm. you know, I'd rather put my money towards omnibuses or something. Mate, I remember uh, Mark at Big City Comics, he uh, had some guy who asked, hey, do you buy books? And Mark's like, not really. And he's like, oh, because I've got these. And Mark's like, I'll give you 15 bucks. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, uh, okay, I was like, man, he must have really needed drugs that day. But anyway, I was going through them, right? And he had like some of the lethal protector stuff from Venom. And I picked one up and I was like, hey, this is the first scream. Was that the yep. female? Mm, yeah, yep. so that was the first scream, right? And I was like, oh, I'm going to get this one. And then Mad Spidey walks in the door, right? And he's like, what's up? 
And then he looks at it in my hand. He's like, oh, I don't have that yet. He's, <laughs> he's like, I don't have that one. I was like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was not happy. But uh, I was like, oh, he likes that shit more than me. So I gave it up. <laughs> Um, As you should for your for I'm, your uh, your se- your senior collector, <laughs> and, I, and, I'm, and I'm still hurting. Uh, yeah. All right, Matt. I know you bought some well, prints. Yes, yes, I did. They, they're for last because they're the only things I pretty much bought. But um, <laughs> obviously, after Cheapskate, you know, he gave me. Let me grab <laughs> yeah. a copy of. Uh, How dare you? And he's gonna be it. watching this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I got him to sign issue one, the variant I got cardstock cover, and then issue five, I think it was, um, which you can all get on. Uh, if you go to eBay, check up MJM Comics. These are listed up on there for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling all my sets. So I got that signed by him. And then I got Joker. He does a uh, he does a one-part story in there. That's um, a hard cover, yeah? Yeah, it's a big, thick, thick one. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, so I got him to sign that as well. Uh, this I'm not selling. I, I like this cover. So, but he's got like one little story. But that was it for Tom. Um, and then Andrew Constant, obviously him and Nicholas Cox, they both worked on this book. Got them both to sign that for me. But then because I feel bad, you know, going up getting signed, so I buy things. So I bought this from Andrew Constant. It was thirty five bucks. Didn't mind paying it. It was. I've never read the Phantom in my life, so I thought, oh, you know what, mate? He goes here, read this one. It's gruesome. It's gritty you should enjoy this one so i end up buying that and uh he signed it for me in there as you can see so i'm looking forward sorry phantom is awesome very i've never read it never in my life so i read a little bit when i was a kid phantom had his day in the sun mate with that billy zane movie i used to love the billy zane movie (laughs) i used i used to reenact that all the time billy zane movie but yeah i never read it can you reenact for us now can you say a few what? phantom lines? Fuck. Um, what's the one with all three skulls that go together? He says, the bad guy says, what did he say? I can't he remember. Says, he put me on the spot. He says, I, haven't watched, I haven't watched that in like 20 years. <laughs> he, that and what was the other one, Billy Zane Dumb? Is it Rocket Man? He says it's phantom morphin time. <laughs> morphin time. Really? Morphin time. <laughs> hey, how do you... I can never find eBay sellers when someone's like, this is my... How do you actually find an eBay seller? Oh, there's a way because I've. I it's so someone. hard. It's like it's not easy. No, I've noticed it's, 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 it's easier easier on the computer than it is on the phone. Okay. Yeah, okay. you have to go on the web, like on the PC. The phone's very hard. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, Nicholas Scott, I got the issue one thousand like print. Got her to sign that. Oh, they're cool. Oh, that's cool. Because I didn't my shitty local store that I don't shop at anymore. He didn't get this cover, so I ended up getting a poster instead. Um, were they regular covers, those ones? I thought they were yeah, like... Yeah, that was, that was the issue. It was the, I think it was the one that Batman uh, 1000, and there was like 10 or 12 different variant <laughs> covers. Okay. Yeah, so it was a variant. I thought it yeah, was like was an variant. exclusive. I thought it was an exclusive or something. I didn't know it was a regular variant. Wasn't a ratio. Maybe it was a no. ratio then, because I never Maybe, saw I thought, it was, local I thought it. it was an exclusive. I didn't think it came out as a regular variant. But, no, I don't um, think it was an exclusive, but I, I do think it was a ratio, though, because I remember I wanted the Superman version of that when that came out. There's so, all of them. There's the Wonder Woman one as well. Yeah. yeah. The, the the Wonder Woman one actually looks the best because she she's drawn Wonder Woman so much that she's oh, just like gotten better my, over these. Wait to see. It's not, oh, not the next the next one, but then I got that one. So it was 3 oh, for 50 bucks. That's good. So I, I love that, but oh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to steal a simple Simon tradition thing here because this I saw it and I, I nearly blew my load. I'm not joking. Get the, get the, that's nice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hey, it. how it. Worthy, man. Look, yeah, look at that. It. 39 seconds flat. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> look, that is just like I saw it. Like she loves to talk about Wonder Woman, but I have like there was that one and uh, Linda Carter's, but. You know, I'm a sucker for no, Gal. I think I think he chose right. Hey, I think he chose right. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, she's she was, she's an amazing artist, man. I got I really I'm eyeing, but it's two and a half grand. I just don't want to pay, pay it. The original sketch of the cover from Wonder Woman, where she's behind the jail cells and she has all the animals with her. I don't know if people have seen that. I can't remember what issue it is, 
but I really want that original print. But it's like it was like two, two and a half grand. I was just like, yeah, I, I'm not <laughs> you really. You that... remember it's like say original like cover or or page. It's... Don't say print because it's not a print. No, no, sorry, it's the original page. Sorry, yeah, the original yeah. cover page, like the mm. original thing. So mm. I really want it because I really love that cover. But yeah. Now I'll start doing those Uber drivings and those uh, Amazon deliveries, and you'll be right. Well, I might do that much money. I could. I could. I could. That's why I'm doing the Uber driving, so I could pay some. You know, the normal Monday and Friday ain't paying me enough. So, yeah. But that's all I picked up. It's just, it was too hard to shop. You just couldn't move. Like, I really wanted to buy some toys. I really wanted to, like, I looked at a lot of the anime stuff because I really want, I'm really hooked on Blade of the Immortal at the moment. And I'm really hunting down a Manji statue. And it's just like Mission Impossible. There's not many around. Yeah. It's just like an older. It's it's older. That's why. Because it was done, the original one was done in like the late 90s. (laughs) Mm. So it's like they they really only do stuff for the newer stuff. Like you you won't yeah, see much needed, of the man. older stuff. And then if you find that older stuff on eBay, it's going for like a thousand dollars. No, I yeah, found some ridiculous. stuff on Amazon for like forty fifty dollars, but it's all <coughs> on Amazon eBay. But it's all like out of the package, and you know what I mean. Like I want yeah. one. I know brand new in the box might be a couple hundred, which I'm happy to pay that. That and um Usagi, which is another thing I'm really hooked on. I was hoping to find toys, but. Now that they've got a show out, hopefully they'll bring out some pops or something with uh yeah, with see, how much how much were those Usagis that you bought? Forty bucks you each? Fifty? Forty. Forty forty two, if you want to be precise. I want to get those. And I saw them at King's Comics and that was seventy five bucks each. Yeah, they're ripped, mate. Like I was saying, at when I was in Sydney, they had it at marked at sixty bucks. They up at the price. I buy them all I, I hate doing it. Like I want to support stores, but Amazon's just like yeah, 100%. Blade of the Immortal, they're 30 bucks, $35. Like mm. the stores have them for 50 bucks. And it's just like, you know what I mean? I can buy two for the price of, you know, three for the price of two from a local store. Yeah. So it sucks, but what can you do, you know? Exactly. Have you get always been into get the deals while they're there? Have you always been into mangas and stuff as well? Ne- that... no, that's... I've always been, been into I love Samurai. I've always loved yeah. Samurai. And then my mate was like, listen. You love Samurai, it's time you... He goes, I don't want to put you down the rabbit hole, but it's time you need to read read manga. Yeah. (laughs) So he he, he put me on to um, Blade of the Immortal, and then, yeah, I got hooked. And then my local comic shop said, oh, here, try Usagi. And then I got hooked on it. Because originally I was like, I'm not reading Usagi, it's a fucking rabbit. I really don't care about a rabbit. I want (laughs) real people, man, not rabbit. Oh, but Ninja Turtles are okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that was his exact response. And I was like, all right, fair point. And he said, oh, so he was in the Ninja Turtles. I was like, oh, was he? I can't recall that. But Mate, then I gave was, that a go. There was a Usagi Jimbo figurine, I think, from the, Ninja, the original Ninja Turtles figurine series. Yeah, Pretty there sure was. there was a yeah, one there. I think so. Yeah. Can't Mate, some of, the best stuff, some of the best stuff I've read has been manga. So... Oh, I read that first book of I rented Attack of Titan from next door at the library. I rented that because I just didn't want to buy it. I wanted I wanted to borrow it just to see if I liked it because I've never read manga. Like this isn't done in the true manga format. It's done, you know, American Americanized. But I read that Attack of Titan. I was like, wow, but I don't want to fall down that hole. I'll spend enough money on comics. I don't want to, but yeah, never. I'll, I've only, it's only I'll the last keep my mouth the shut then. Hey. I'll keep my mouth shut then because I could, if you're starting on samurais and stuff just like give me, that. If you're anything just... samurai, I'm happy to spend, but I don't want to go down that hole of like Notorio, One Punch Man. Is it One Punch or? One, one, pa- one Punch Man. So you can go one Samurai Samurai 7. You could go Samurai Shampoo. You could go and this uh, all Marini manga. Kenshin. You could samurai go. Chip. Samurai X. That's what, that's what Maroonie like Kenshin book. is. A couple of weeks ago. I just finished reading, which I didn't really like, but it's an actual comic, mm. which is all right. Yeah. Um, did I, you I watch Batman Ninja? Batman off the top of my head. Yeah, I didn't like Batman, nah. <laughs> yeah. That was a trip, dude. I like the art style in it. It was great. Yeah, but that, the story? Yeah. Like when the yeah. three billion bats form a big Batman and all the monkeys form a giant monkey, I was like, that was the same as, um, what was it, Batman and the dragon, the one with Bruce Lee. Like soul, soul, drag. soul of the dragon. Soul of the drag. Fuck. Mm. Didn't like that either. <laughs> what about the old Marvel manga series as they did? They did X Men. They, they were awesome. Yeah. I love them. I, I've got those all on DVD. And I yeah, think so I've do never, I. Yeah. Never watched them. Yeah. X Men one, the Blade one. 
Yeah, um, X-Men played and Wolverine, Wolverine and Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, they were awesome. All right, that's nah, good that's to know. Well, the Bat- Batman Ninja was done by a <laughs> Japanese uh, anime studio. That's why it was styled that way. Well, look, my review on Batman Ninja was, after I watched it, I was like, it's not for Batman fans. It's for anime fans. Like, yeah, it's yeah. made... It's like, if you're not used to watching anime, you're going to trip out and be like, what the hell is going on here? No, if that's, you're used that's to watching why anime, I that kind of like stuff happens all the time. Yeah, and no, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, that's I why I enjoy it. I Mortal anime, which I'm actually enjoying. That's awesome. I've had, yeah, I've had that not... on DVD for probably 15 years. Yeah, I'm like I four or five to... episodes in, and I like it. It's good. Mm. Uh, it's different, to... but it's good. Oh, and it's only a short to series, do... too. Yeah. I've been wanting to do a like manga versus comic book sort of episode with Mark at the shop, but I need to read one first. So <laughs> I've got like the My Hero Academia first first volume. But Sarah like smashed out. She started reading One Piece, and you know One Piece is like one of the longest ones out there. Yeah, she's mm. read through like in the last month maybe. She's read through like I don't know seventy five percent of it or something like that already. Wow. It's insane. Wow. Are, you, are you up to date on One Piece like the manga itself? Yeah, or I oh, yeah, no, you never read it. No, she was watching, she was watching it all in Japanese. Like she's seen about was seven hundred and something episodes on, um, on Crunchyroll, but I uh, haven't actually read it. It's funny because Sarah can't watch the anime, so she tried, and she's like, "Oh, it's too old." And it's funny because, like, to me, old is twenty plus years. So, like, things that are ten years old don't really feel that old. You know what I mean? Like... Old is like. The original Vampire Hunter, uh, yeah, D, or like uh, Le- Legion of the Ninja Overfiend, Troll. or yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's old. old. We're getting old. Oh, we just have to admit it. Ghost oh, in the no. Shell. <laughs> I don't know if no it's None of that sounds old to me. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a Ninja Turtle arcade machine, but you know what it is? Like, we're getting old. We need to deal with no, it. No, <laughs> it's not old. It's retro. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolf by Lunchtime. What a great name. I like that. Yeah. Fellow hey, Aussie, Darren. He's, he's sort of a fellow Aussie. He's up in uh, Perth, I think it is, and but he's a it's a pom. Perth, switched over to some mad party. Very nice place. Yeah, I haven't been there since I was a kid. Um, I decided to yeah, I, I've been wanting to try and actually pick up some of the the Marvel horror stuff. Um, so I actually went searching for a bit of uh, like Tomb of Dracula, Werewolf by Night. Son of Satan, all that sort of stuff. So I was able to pick up a few Tomb of Dracula books, which was good. Uh, no, no key issue or anything like that, just some filler stuff, but they're a little bit pricey. But um, So I picked up, so I got number 27. I all, think uh, books in the wild in Australia is still a freaking... Yeah, crazy. it's and that, that's why I hated that... Um, you know, that we can't get into Evil Empire because he would have some. He'd be about the only where, shop in the whole of Australia that probably have where some. Where did you – did you get most of these books from the guy from Canberra? Uh, yeah, well, about 95, 95% of it. Okay. Um, number 29. Yeah, so as I said, like these are all just like non-key issues, just fillers. But, yeah, as, uh, as Bo said, very hard to come across Tomb of Dracula. Or werewolf, or any of those ones. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you actually read these, the Tomb of Dracula? I'm only asking because I've got the two omnibuses and I haven't read them yet. No, no. I've, um, I may have read an odd issue on that like back in the day, but like nothing. I haven't read anything and, you know, we won't go into that story as per usual. He hasn't read a comic book since, uh, since Wicked City and Ninja Scroll were out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I had to get this one because, yeah, Silver Surf is another one of my favorite cool outside, of the, outside of the, uh, Spidey verse. So I'd be dying to read that just to open that. Fifty. How does Dracula fight Silver Surfer? Exactly. <laughs> uh, another one of my favourite outside of the Spidey verse is Blade. So old school Blade on the cover there. So issue number fifty-one. Uh, picked up fifty-three. Got Blade um, on the. Uh... How much does the uh, first Blade go for these days? Don't don't even go there. That's been my on that's been in my top ten, top twenty want list for years, and I just it just keeps skyrocketing because he's coming to the MCU. Uh, issue fifty four. So 
So they're all, all in pretty good nick. You've you picked up quite a few. And how much mm. were they each book? Like if they're just uh, run fillers, how much Oh, yeah. Nah, even the run fillers, these were like $20, $30 books, even for run yeah. fillers. Yeah, it's, 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 too, it's too uncommon over here. Um, mine, minor key. Simon won't know this character, but the other two boys might. Uh, so it's Miss Marvel no, number nine, first appearance of Deathbird. Yep. Uh, I know, I learned who Deathbird was from a Mad Spidey video. Thank you very much. Oh, there you <laughs> go. So, yes, right, this is obviously, this is getting into the keys now. Uh, part three or four, I think, of the Dark Phoenix saga. So this is actually the second appearance of Dark Phoenix. Now, that is freaking iconic, that is. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't have that already. No, I'm... I don't have a lot of old X Men books, unfortunately, and oh, okay. like 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 uh, Fantastic Four and Spidey, they've all skyrocketed. Yeah, uh, not in the greatest of condition, but it's a very old book, so I was I was just happy to pick it up. X Men number twenty eight. That is, that's massive. First appearance of Banshee. I was gonna say that's the first appearance of Banshee. Yeah, mm. well done, well done. How much did you pay for that one? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Are you giving prices here? <laughs> <laughs> another, book, another book I've been hunting. I actually never knew this book existed until about twelve months ago. I've been hunting for it, um, and thank you to my lovely other half that helped me get this book. <laughs> Legion of Monsters. So it's a Marvel Premiere book, Marvel Premiere twenty eight. If anybody knows about Marvel Premiere, they pretty much nearly every issue was a key issue. That's where all like a whole heap of first appearances and that happen. A bit like Marvel Spotlight, same sort of thing. Is that Star Wars, Wars is like that? You get into Star Wars comics, every issue is a first appearance. Yeah. So you got you got Man Thing, Morbius, Werewolf by Night, and Johnny Blaze oh. Ghost Rider. And Morbius that's actually the going, first mate. appearance of the Legion of Monsters. The way Morbius is going, mate, I don't know about that book anymore. <laughs> Mad Spidey is also the only person who liked that movie. Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> Better than this, Venom, this, but yeah. This book was this oh, book about twelve months ago was like a, a five dollar book. Now in a raw, it's like a hundred hundred and fifty dollar book. It's you know, yeah. it's, and I have never seen this in Australia ever. What year never was that one? Uh, 74, 75, I think. Like, grab as much werewolf by night as you can before uh, this Halloween. That's my tip to you. Yeah. After Halloween, mm. werewolf by night's going to skyrocket. Oh, I'm glad I've got a big book coming then. You heard it here <laughs> first. Uh, getting two two books left. Another Marvel premiere book, but a lot bigger. Marvel Ooh. premiere, number 15. First appearance of Iron Fist. Dude, that's a nice the first appearance. Up. That's the first appearance. So... Does that mean that came out? Well, obviously it does. So I'm just confused because I thought Iron Fist was in um, uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. No, his first, this was his first appearance, Marvel premiere. Shang Chi was from Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, right? No, yeah, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu is Shang Chi. Yeah. No, but the second. No, 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 no. It used to just be like different stories. I think Shang Chi came from it, right? Because wasn't there like yeah. Western stories and stuff like that? Like Western. Yeah, the first, first appearance, the first appearance of Shang Chi is in a. Um, it's a Marvel. It's in one of those type books. It's in a Spotlight book. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, Spotlight yeah. book. It's a Spotlight. But it's like book. a. It's like got some weird name like that. But it's um yeah he, his first appearance is in this and his second appearance I think is the next book, um and then he gets his own series very shortly after, so he gets his yeah first solo solo book and then he also becomes part of um what's the name uh power man and, and iron fist as well yeah so that must have come out before deadly hands because he was definitely in it special marvel edition 15 was shang chi yeah 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 i knew it was one of those spotlights or premieres or one of those sort of books uh and lucky last if anybody collects floppies if anybody knows about, obviously, during COVID, the massive, ridiculous rise in especially Marvel books and especially the original series and also sub-100 books in number 
Uh, obviously, sub 10 is even worse. Even if it's a non key, it's still ridiculously expensive. Oh, wow. Avengers, Avengers number five. Wow. That's, yeah. Props, mate. So wow. that's, um, yeah, anything sub 10 in any of the big Marvel books from the start of the Silver Age, ridiculous. And I got this for an absolute steal. But Mad Spidey hasn't actually eaten since he bought all these books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Beck bought me lunch. <laughs> Cooley, Cooley, you don't drive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like the prices out, can you afford? <laughs> Holy shit. I, I have a work van to get to and from work. <laughs> actually, yeah, no, no digging, Jim. I actually did. <laughs> I went. I went with a set physical cash amount. And that is, and besides, obviously, the help with the Legion of um, of uh, Monsters book, which she's telling me now that's my Christmas present. So thank you very much for Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I didn't. I, I actually walked out with twenty bucks left. Yeah, but see, when you show up, and like even Bo before he said ten years ago he'd show up with four hundred bucks, I show up to a con with like you know, one fifty, two hundred. I think I showed up with two fifty this year. Uh, and I just I did go home with all plenty of change. It was just nothing that really stood out. And oh, obviously, I didn't have. I, I really want to buy some toys and stuff, but I just couldn't get into those shops. It's uh, nothing worse yes, than when there's yeah. when there's international uh, comic artists here. Uh, that's when yeah, I've got to save for months and months and months. I was going to say I want to clarify that statement, and that is that I don't just rock up with four hundred bucks and go, oh yeah, bling bling bling. This is me saving up. Um, knowing that Comic Con's coming, and yeah. it's after four year, <laughs> and yeah, and ten years ago, uh, prices weren't what they were now, and oh. I knew that I could easily spend four, five hundred dollars there. You know what Three I mean? years like, ago, the prices weren't like they are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, like, I cannot believe. Like, I'm so glad when I first started collecting because it's only it's been less than four years still that I bought some of those keys. Um, because now I would never just fork like anything over. A hundred to me is like it's a lot of money for a comic book, you know what I mean? So like back then I was buying like the most expensive book I think I bought in that first sort of twelve months of collecting was uh DC Presents twenty six, the um first Raven, Starfire and all that. Uh and I got it for a hundred bucks. And at the time I was like, I can't believe I'm spending a hundred dollars on a comic book, and now it goes for a lot more than that. And even um, with those slabs that I've got, the first appearance of Venom, the first appearance of Carnage, I bought all of those. For I don't know, I think Venom was like sixty bucks. Carnage would have been like maybe one fifty. And as soon as I bought them, a couple of months later, now I just can't believe how much they go for. Well, Carnage has dropped because I think uh, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny though? Isn't that Venom, funny? Venom's ridiculous though. That's still Isn't like that... a depending on what what grade is your slab? Did you say you slabbed it? Uh, I think it's a nine point eight. It's pretty high, I think. Yeah, so that'd be like a. Uh, like a six hundred dollar book, seven hundred dollar book now. You're oh. kidding! No, wow. I've got to thank Tom Taylor for one thing, and that's what he's doing with Super well, Jonathan Kent. Because a lot of people said, you know, when I was collecting Convergence and buying all the side issues from Convergence, everyone's like, "Oh, you're stupid! Why are you buying them all?" And now that first appearance of Jonathan. Oh, Kent that's being right. Born, that book went up. That's right. Mm. That's up a fair. That's up a lot than what I got it for. So I think I think it's pretty ignorant of of comic collectors to to think to, <laughs> Superman's son, his first appearance is not going to be something that's important one day. Yeah, you but know? that was a lot of them have 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 the kids, and it's not like even Damien's first appearance isn't worth much. It's like I, it was yeah, the same. That's, as that's a good Joker's point. daughter. Yeah. With, Joker's daughter booms for the first like. Yeah, but two, Joker's daughter, Joker's daughter isn't even Joker's daughter, right? No, yeah, Joker's um... daughter was <laughs> Joker's daughter was simply the flavor of the month, you know, like mm. punchline and all these other crap that you hear about that skyrockets. Give it two months and it's down again. A punchline. Once they introduce punchline into the film, she'll go up. Oh yeah, but yeah I'm, but I'm, I, I, I'm just happy. Movies though, that's happy hard. I don't get a there was rumours that she was going to get her own show. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, do you remember that Hella Risen? That was her first appearance. Yeah, so that was, so, no, so Batman 89 was her cameo, which I've got. Yeah. But then Hella Risen I just couldn't get, and I'm spewing because that's her you first. I've got it. Hella Risen MJM was, was comics, really... Was hey? MJM Comics? No, nah, I'm not selling that, baby. Not, <laughs> not, not until she makes an appearance on the big screen. Then I might consider uh, selling it. 
Mate, I was like, uh, did you see I was doing my comic when I did my top 10 Spider-Man comics? I showed this comic that I just picked, like, a, I picked up in, like, a dollar bin. And then some guy was telling me that it was a um a special edition in, in a NFL magazine that was, it was, like, free in an NFL magazine over in America. It's worth about 50 bucks. I didn't even know. It's not super pro, is it? <laughs> Wait, I think I saw, has it got him getting tackled by a bunch of gridiron players? Yeah, it's got, it's got all the, like, the Senator Six on the front. It's got like okay. it's like ten pages long, nine pages long. It's a very short comic book, and then yeah, I was like, "What the hell?" The best, mate, that comic Tom app, that what is it? Key Collector, whatever. That's what I used yeah. to. Yeah, but also, do you think that app also ruins the market for guys like us who just want to buy the freaking book at a good price? Yeah. It's also, it's key, also key, key it's Collector, also you got to be careful. Yeah. Key Collector for old books is nearly always spot on. Newer books. Not yeah, so much. I always go click, click that, and then I go on eBay, and I, I go to sold on eBay. I don't go to freaking what they're selling for. Oh no, no, I'm not talking about pricing. I'm talking about information. Yeah, oh, no, no, information, it, no, no. Hey, um, it's the second best you know hair in uh, in the YouTube right. community. <laughs> um, you know what's silly though, right? Like the the whole Comic Tom stuff, right? That made things like, for example, something I saw on eBay. So, you know, Something's Killing the Children got hot, right? Super hot. The preview magazine, like, you know, preview magazines? I should have one within arm's reach, but I don't. Um, those preview magazines, the one that had the first issue of Something's Killing the Children was going on eBay for $1,000, a previews wow. magazine. And that's just, doesn't make sense. And also, like, the low print run, like, fourth print, uh, it's worth more because there's less copies. It's like, I don't care about yeah, that stupid fourth print. Like, that sort of stuff pisses me off. Yeah, same. Like, if it makes yeah. you feel better that you got the fourth print and it's a lower print run, you know, whatever. Like, at the first print. <laughs> like, like my fourth print of Strange Academy 1, but it's at least it's the error edition, not the uh, not just a fourth print. I'm going to sell mine. I think that's the book that will go up to a point. At some point, I'm just going to be like, pay for something. For so I, don't think, like, I don't get his, like... For example, Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue one. I got the cardstock variant because I liked the cover. But yet the original cover goes more than the cardstock cover. So, but the cardstock cover is worth more money when you buy it. I yeah. think, like, to me, it's like I always collect A. So if it's something I'm reading and I want variants, I will always buy the A cover, even if I don't like it. Because to me, the A cover represents that book and that story. The variants are just a variant. So no matter what, so for example, someone's killing the children, like the prison cover is way better issue one, but that A cover is worth the most. It's, it's, yeah, I, feel like I, get, I get that logic and agree with you, but unfortunately in reality, it's not always accurate because there's, there's been plenty of Venom uh, first appearances or whatever that I've got. And then later down the track, I see a variant and I find out that variant's worth more than my A cover. A ratio it's... might be. Like a ratio often would be if it's a yeah, one in twenty. Well, like like a stupid one in one thousand or something, which is like yeah, what, what, what store in a, what what store in Australia is gonna spend a, like a, you know a million bucks buying a thousand copies of one book. The, what one annoys one. me is Deathstroke, um uh what's his name? Daniel's run, the one in five the one in twenty five variant for issue one was twenty five bucks. And now the new one, Deathstroke Inc., this is like five years later. The one in twenty five variants, fifty bucks. I was like, you can double the price. Like ratio is no pissing me off. Like when you get to one in a hundred, like there was that prison uh, death cover. Did you guys see that? That yeah. book is a two hundred and fifty yeah, because it's a one in one hundred or whatever. It's just like I, I just knew straight out. I was so pissed off because I was like, I know I can't get that book. There's no yeah. shot. Like but you it's know, it's harder to get it here though. Then you know, what I mean, it's harder for us as yeah. well because not not many stores get a hundred copies of that. And that's what cool. you got to think of is that, and that's why a lot of people like over here go, oh, the ratio cover, it's so expensive. But you got to think it from the money side of things from the yeah. shop. They've got to spare, they've got to buy, yeah, as I said, a hundred copies at a book that's $5 or $6 or $10 or whatever it is. Stop converted. standing up for Ultimate Worlds. I'm not <laughs> standing up for anybody. Um, and then you obviously, they're trying to recoup their money, especially yeah. if all those copies, if they don't sell bugger all of them. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand why they don't do the team because I've got because I get mine from my comic shop online in from America, and they've got these variants called team variants where comic shops team up 
and say he buys 50, he buys 50, then they I've both have 100. They get the team variant because I've got a couple of team variants with their 10 bucks US. Mate, you, you cannot get them in Australia. So yeah. I don't know if they're going to go for more. And they're like foil covers as well. And that's what I, I just don't works. understand why our stores in Australia can't do that. Like, why can't the guys just team up and just get it so we can get those variants? Because it's every man for himself out here, right, mate? It's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Go to my old local comic shop, mate. He, 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 I like your old comic shop, mate. Yeah, but it was true. only that one time. That one time stuff. where, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, if you can only get stuff overseas, it's always going to be worth so much more. I mean, I'm going to do you poo book that I think is worth nothing, but because it's a metal cover, um, oh, you take oh, a look oh, online and they're like, I hate those books. books. Those books are the yeah. biggest waste of stupid time. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hardly um, thin. Yeah, hardly yeah. thin. Hardly the hardly thin books are alright because that's just a. And the poo exactly... covers are awesome. The poo no, covers, the poo are, covers awesome. are stupid. Have you seen the Jordan one? <laughs> They're all stupid. They are so awesome. Yeah. Sierra's got a Do You Poo, and it's a Something's Killing Children A cover homage, which is awesome as well. I think it just says Do You Poo. <laughs> they're awesome. Yeah, I don't know I why they're worth so much. Probably because they're low print. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all done by the same guy, and all he's doing is just trying to capitalize, just to trying to, you know, just trying to trying to make money because he's not getting hired by any of the big bloody companies. That's the only yeah, reason why. Working, they... <laughs> yeah, good yeah, luck to him yeah. if it's working for him. I'm not going to buy any of them. There was one guy at um Sean's at Sean's convention um, that was selling a lot of those exclusive American stuff. I didn't. I just didn't have the money. Like he had a lot of the hardly thins, a lot of the poo covers, uh, the naughty and nice covers, and all that stuff. I was like, where the hell is he getting all these? Take them. I love those. That's the thing. If you can't find them listed on eBay, like if they're a rare cover and you can't find them listed here on Australian eBay, do you reckon they go for a lot, or go for more than what you'd think? Mm. Yeah, I do. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the old rule of, um, you know. Uh, something is only as much. Uh, something is only as, as worth as much as someone else is willing to pay. Oh shit! Did you guys see? Um, so my mate posted this for me. Uh, showed me this post. So he saw. So you know this book here, uh, this Star Wars book here. It's like uh, uh, this one here with Obi Wan. So I think it's a story about how Chris Santon got his scar, right? And obviously because of the Obi Wan show, I think a lot of people speculated that it would happen in that show, which it didn't. Someone that was a sold listing for that. So the book was going back six months. The book was going for, I don't know, $30, $40, let's say that. Someone bought, it was a sold listing recently for $400. Wow. Someone, it is a nothing book. And someone paid $400 for it. Yeah, you, you want to know one even better? Actually, Bo, you might have this book, actually. Because you collect Dell Auto covers. Yeah. There is a Dell Auto variant from the Spider Island run. Oh, yeah, okay. That went in a 9.8 CGC slab on a heritage auction for over $40,000. <laughs> oh, my God. you have. And we're sh- talking about a book that's probably... When was Spider I Island? Tell you, about, tell you right now. <laughs> Spider Island's about 10 years ago, I yeah. reckon. Probably about 10 to 15 years ago. So, like, a, just a storyline. Nothing, no key issue, no nothing. Just a Del Otto exclusive cover and over forty grand. That's insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. Not even just a key a issue or anything. Wow. Well, it's like that Detective Eight Eighty. I've always wanted that cover. You yeah. know, the Joker one. The Jock is it Jock that does it? Yeah, Jock. Um, yeah. I've one got a giant. The, oh, the, the, the bats with the white yeah. the white background. Like, you know, the bats. Oh, the like, that one. one. Yeah, like yeah. and Lee Lee from Wack found that at like an op shop for five bucks. Yeah. Wow, jeez. Your mate, your mate Phil at Evil Empire, he had it on the wall for I think two fifty, and I was like, I ain't paying two fifty for that. So instead, I bought a giant, I bought like a giant frame, I and mean, I was like, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> uh, if you jizz on that cover, is that considered a variant? <laughs> <laughs> Not if it's but, a blank. If it's a blank cover, you <laughs> it might be a black blank. <laughs> Please, can we? <laughs> Dragon, what have you done to the chat? <laughs> <laughs> what he does every single time. Hey, is is Mark open on Sundays, Big City? Yeah, I'll yes, but tomorrow. just check his hours because he's he, he does 12. weird hours. You'll be like twelve to 12. four. You do like uh, twelve to four. I got to pick up your books. Four hours. I was going to come over today, mate, and drop off your books, but Sarah's like, oh, I want to go see Matt too, and I'm going to work. I was like, fine, we'll do it. Doors open, mate. Come whenever you want. All right. 
right. We'll figure that because I've got your book still. <laughs> the one's for free comic book day. <laughs> You know, Mark, I went into my Mark, we having a good chat about AEW wrestling, and he's good, man. He's my new local now. Mate, How long does it take you to get there? Well, I was luckily that time I went there, I was still my Ubers, and I ended up in Footscray. So I was like, oh, sweet. But it would take, it was only 15 minutes, man. Yeah. 15, maybe 20, 20 at most. But um, at my old place, it used to be like 50 minutes, it was pain in the ass. Now it's about 35, 40. So, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, my my old one, I refused to name it. He's he was like ten minutes, not even eight minutes from here. Oh, uh, Collector's Edge. Yeah, that one. I like that shop, man. I like that oh, shop. It's great, mate. Um, actually, yeah. in saying that, someone I know, because you know, I always talk shit on Alternate Worlds, which is where Mad Spidey shops, as well as Big City. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always talk crap on Alternate Worlds, and I someone I know, I won't name who it is. Uh, he goes to Big City. And he was talking to me one day. He goes, you know how you have that thing with Alternate Worlds? And he goes, what, uh, I'm pretty sure you said Collector's Edge is that to him. He's like, because they screwed him over once on some book. Was uh, it, that'll come for us. Four I people I know. Four people I know now got screwed over certain books. So it's just like, well, you know, I mean, I don't care if you want to pull, pull it off the shelf. If it's, you know, if there's hot property on it, pull it off the shelf, whatever. But don't pull it out of people's pool lists. And, oh, dude. So... Mate, my mate who shops at Alton, my mate has been shopping at Alton Worlds for over 20 years. And every week he's telling me this shit, right? So on free comic book day, he went to pick up his books and he had all the Obi-Wan variants on, on his pull list. And they're like, oh, we don't have any of them. They didn't have any of them for him. They're like, I don't know what happened. Sorry. Right. So only a couple of weeks ago, he went in and he saw the B cover, right? And they were selling it for 15 bucks. And he goes, he's like, can I just have that at cover price since you guys messed up my order? And they said no. Yeah, I'm not they surprised, said, man. No, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> like, yeah, why I don't know Mike Stores doing that. That's just a dog. <laughs> I mean, I remember when Corona uh, first happened, and everyone was going nuts about that Spider-Man cover with the villain called Corona. Um, oh, yeah. I I looked online to get a to get a copy, and I found one at Alternate Worlds, and it was like I don't know five ten bucks or something. And I, I told him to hold it for me in that. And by the time I drove down there and got there, they, it had gone to like 50 bucks. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Someone just made an account. <laughs> is that? Somebody, somebody's um, playing silly buggers. So, so what Ultimate World, so the, what started my thing with Ultimate Worlds, and I did a video about it ages ago, right? So there was this, um, Tom Taylor book actually that I wanted uh, just because I really liked the cover. It was a Rose and Thorn book, a DC book. Um, and they had it, I think it was like eight bucks or something like that. So I bought it online and my mate, same mate, he same mate, he went to pick it up for me. And when he got there, they said, Oh, sorry. Oh no, they called him and said, Hey, that book's in your box ready to go. He's like, Cool. He went to get it and they said, Oh, it's not in there. He's like, What do you mean? He's a message saying that it's in there. And he's like, Oh, I don't know, I don't know where it went. And all of a sudden, he, he goes to the website, and it's no, it says sold out, and it went up to like twenty bucks or something like that. Even though he got the text saying it's in your box, ready to go, at the eight, because he had screenshots of like the eight dollars, how much it was originally, and that that's just started this whole thing with me and alternate worlds, and then just hearing stories from all these people, I'm like, man, what the hell? So, hope you're watching this alternate worlds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't understand. Now <laughs> they're obviously not smart businessmen because you pull it out of people's pool list and then you go list it on your eBay site. Like, mate, I think, I think that comic crawl that we did proved that they're not very smart when it comes oh, to yeah. this opportunity. I mean, here we are vlogging a comic book crawl. He sees about ten people outside of his building before he's open, and he doesn't even say hello. He just walks past. Didn't even, know, didn't even acknowledge if you're in the store. Didn't ask if you need a hand. What you're looking I for? Like, so my mate who, who gets screwed over all the time. He says he's like they have the potential to be the greatest shop in Melbourne yeah, because their back their back inventory is amazing. Yeah, yes. right. But they're just and and they're the longest outstanding shop uh, out of all of them. All the other ones have died off. They've been around longer than Comics R Us, Collectors Edge. You know, all of them. They, they've been around the longest. Yes, they've lost over forty years. All the, all their shops, 
and gone to one main location, but they have they have yeah been the longest uh, running. So they've got to be doing something, right? Yeah, screwing people yeah, out of money. <laughs> they, they might be doing something right and they might have outlasted a lot of other people and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, they have so much potential to be so much better and bigger. But and how many scores up that way? Service just sucks. Yeah, but the thing that pisses me off is that my mate's been shopping there for – like when you've been so loyal for so long, what, when you look after those guys who've been around. Yeah, easily, 100%. Dude, that's you know? like – I was like 10, 15 years at my local. And then, yeah. And then I seen him do it to a certain someone that's been shopping there for fucking 30 years and his best freaking mate. Oh, it's all right. I'll, I'll allow him to screw me. <laughs> and I was just like, what? Are you kidding me, man? The dude just screwed you. And then you still shop there. But that's I guess that's why alternate worlds is. Maybe the people that they screw keep shopping there and they're not – you know, strong enough to say, screw it, I'm not shopping there anymore, I'm going to go elsewhere. But then again, your area, there's probably not that many comic shops, I'm well, assuming. It's the only one. Yeah. Mm. We've got heaps over here. So there used, got to be, there used, to be more, there used to be a lot more shops, there used to be a lot more spread out, or, or there used to be like clusters. Like obviously you had the city cluster. Well, going to the city used to be the best when Classic Comics was around still. So you got Classic Comics, Comics R Us, Minotaur, All Star. It's like mm. beautiful. What was the one at the end of Burke Street? That was classic comics. Was that classic? New Par- no, Parliament was... Station? Yeah, New Parliament. Yeah. yeah, you had to go down that little alley and it was like down those couple of on... steps. Like, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. The right. They're still on eBay. They're on eBay still. So. Are they on eBay? Are they? Yeah. So I remember I used to go there and then Comics <laughs> R Us. Mm. Well, classic then, comics yeah. actually used to be in that same alley, but the corner shop. Yeah. They used to be on the oh, right on that corner there, and then that rent got a little bit too high, so they actually moved down like the three doors into that there, the one before they closed. Comics are also in, it's just staying in Paran now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, it. They closed down the uh, the, the Burke Street. So another one that I like, I go to All Star. All Star's really good, man. They always look yeah, after me, give me discounts all stars always. Great. All Star's yeah, really good. good. The, only the only thing problem, is, the only not... problem with All Star is it's all new stuff. Yeah, they're not yeah. great for back issues. Yeah, yeah. 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 But they've got really good customer service, though. I mean, yeah, I yeah. I buy so little these days physically, and I, I've got no need to really go to the comic book store. But whenever I do go to All Star, um, whether it's been months or whatever I buy, they're always offering me ten percent off. You know, and even though it, you know ten percent's not much, who gives a shit? It's the fact that they they just offer it and and treat you like they're happy to see you there. That makes you want to go back. But at least at least they're not getting screwed like i've been hearing a lot of, like simon be able to attest to this obviously talking to a lot of the guys in the american comic community that a lot of these shops a lot of guys are yeah getting rid of as well because they're getting ebay list sold price checked at the counter yeah, the books they're picking shit. up out of is... dollar bins and five dollar bins and stuff like that like oh, i just go oh, i found this you know these in the dollar bin they go Oh, hang on! I better check eBay sold list. Yeah, that's wrong. Oh no, that that's a fifty dollar book, not a dollar book. Oh, wow. That's why I hate it a lot. At the com- at the com- so at the toy fair, there was that guy who had books. He didn't have prices on them, so some had like big books, and then some didn't. So I was like, oh, how much are your how much are the books that aren't marked? And he's like, well, oh, it just depends. It's like, all right. So pull up a Total Recall <laughs> a comic book with Arnie on the front. I was like, how much is this? And he looks and he's like, oh. Oh, like 15 bucks and i was oh, like is that the garage what? sale guy no this was at the um oh no i don't know what he was in it was at the toy fair last time but he was just uh, like, I was like I'm at 10. there yeah. is nothing worse than seeing somebody when you ask them what price is something and they're going the whole uh, 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 because i always visualize this little part of their brain that starts at zero and then ends at like a thousand dollars and they've got like this <laughs> like uh, where do I where do I stop? Uh, Four hundred. There you go. No, I say twenty. I say ten. If they go fifteen, <laughs> I will say eight. I'll just keep going down. Fuck that. <laughs> That's how I There's do it, man. Like, it work. There was one guy. There was one guy who had books that were all like three bucks, and just everyone was three bucks. I was like, yeah, there you go. All the unmarked See, ones. If written a dollar, if they put a dollar sticker on it, you can. I don't know how America works, but in Australia, we've got a thing called Consumer Affairs. If they've got a dollar sticker on it, and they tell you, "Oh, no, nah, it's worth fifteen dollars well, now," well, I'll see a Consumer Affairs. But alternate alternate worlds should be able to get screwed for that then, because they've got to advertise on the website, and then yeah. it changes after you bought bought it, and they can't supply the book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <sighs> it's it's very hard. I've actually had this particular conversation 
I've had it with Mark, actually. I've had it with Mark. I've had it with uh, a few other collectors in that in Australia that it's it's very hard to get the ACCC and that involved in the collectibles market. Yeah. Very, exactly. very hard. Yes, it is true. If you take something up to the counter, it's got a price tag on it, you have to pay that price. If there's no price tag on it, they can charge you whatever the hell yeah, they, they want. They want, yeah. That's yeah. Because there, there is no, there is no like unless, RRP on things when in the no, no, unless they have six, a price list. Unless there's six, trust me, I've freaking gone in trouble with this ship at Rebel Sport. Mm. Unless there's six, if it says dollar bin and there's six issues of that coffee, copy, it has to go for a dollar because it's the the legal limit. It's I think six. Of the mm. items on that, so you know how people go to Coles. Oh, I found this, you know, on the two dollar rack. They could just put it on the two dollar rack. Yeah, exactly, they, right? If, yeah, if there's six of those items on the rack in that spot, mm. it, it proves a precedent. Price, then you have to, um, yeah, it, uh, honor that price. Because we, we used so, to have um, when I worked at Harvey's, they're like even Simon, you probably know, like the A Triple C used to send people in all the time, especially yeah. when I worked in the city store. Like they'd walk in. We were always told if anybody from the ACCC walks in, straight to the manager. Because they'd walk in with a clipboard with a list of prices, you know, of about 20, 30 different items. If you didn't have that at RRP or lower, they just shut your store down until it gets sorted. Jesus. Yeah. Old school. That's yeah. another thing I don't like how every comic store has like a single issue, a floppy, different prices. <laughs> Everyone has different freaking prices. Except for Mark. Yes, yeah, in the US, they don't, though, right? <laughs> in the US, they pay well. It's three ninety nine. Okay. It's what it says on the cover. <sighs> That's why these guys got to get into my comic shop, mate. I pay four dollars twenty for a comic. Four dollars twenty. Four twenty. Mm-hmm. And I sell when I sell my sets. I sell them in sets of seven, like a story arcs six, and I sell them for forty bucks. And I'm selling them. I'm making a dollar, a dollar fifty off each each sell. Yeah, so, that actually that actually is smart. <laughs> mate, yeah. when I re, when I resell the books, like if it's a shit series, like I just sold Teen Titans United all seven issues for fifty bucks. <laughs> and I paid four dollars each for the comics. Yeah, I shouldn't say that because now people aren't going to shop on my eBay store. But oh, you know, hey. MJM Comics, guys, just make sure you uh, you no, uh, well, that's the thing. people are going to pay if if I pay four twenty and I can get seven dollars for for the comic because the stores are selling for eight bucks. Why not, mate? You're trying to make money. I get it. So, so if we give you best, best I'm offer, not, I'm smart. Like you got to like I'm thinking. The way I see it now is like, yeah, all these comics that I've bought previously, like these that I paid, you know, full eight dollar fifty price, I'm losing money on. But now I've built up like, you know, I've made about twelve hundred dollars in sales, and now that money just goes towards my new comics. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm not paying for comics. It's like I'm just trading now. You're funding your own hobby. You're letting the hobby fund itself. That's yeah, the dream. That's exactly right. I'm letting the it's hobby like- fund itself. So, so we're all going to go onto your eBay store, and we're all going to go best offer of like four dollars and five cents per. I don't have. <laughs> I don't see again. I don't have best offers. It's that's the oh, price. I but, ruin his then. feedback. But I search everyone what they're selling it for, and I sell it three, four dollars cheaper than them. Yeah, yeah, that's and I'm still it. making money. So you know what I mean? Like you've got to. <laughs> that's no, why I, I keep telling people, people do best and offer. I'm, I'm like trying to get rid. Like my comic shop online, you will. Once you go and buy them, if you take like you need to team up with someone because the shipping, you half the shipping of someone. And I can promise you now you're gonna be like, fuck, well, I haven't been doing this my whole life. You will save so much money. Uh, yeah, and for those who sorry, I was just gonna say for those anyone in Australia who wants to get onto this, uh, Matt actually has a video of a break telling you how to telling you how to do it. So but you don't buy trades because trades are heavier, so therefore the weight shipping is gonna be more expensive. So I go and buy all my trades from my local stores. And, if and Simon can't, can't do it because he, he buys 35,000 copies of each of the Lickworthy variants. So that'd be a lot of shipping. <laughs> and it, and it's, keeping big, it's keeping the doors of the big city open. So yeah. <laughs> we want that. <laughs> that number one uh, funding supporter of big city comics. <laughs> no, like, I'm far from, mate. There's a couple of customers that... Like, there was one day, right? You know, I dropped, you know, about 200 yeah. odd a week there. Um, oh, the, and um, one day he had two of his other customers and yeah, one of them the dropped about... 450 and then the other one dropped about 600 and i was like oh i was like i thought i was big dog around here, but obviously not <laughs> the, the, the other mark guy that mark much. always talks about that buys all the like vampirella and and all those yeah. sort of books it yeah, gets every he, single variant to like yeah, so he'll get like 30 so he doesn't buy oh no he does buy multiple sometimes but he'll literally mm. get cover a and those dynamite books have like cover a to like s and it will get all of them 
What is with all yeah, those stupid instantly. accounts popping up? All right. It's got to be someone just having taken the piss. It's, I bet you it's Lee. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's got to be Lee. Everyone always blames stuff on Lee. <laughs> yeah, because he's no, a doobie fucker. If Lee, he would have been kind enough to add the word Aussieverse to one of these accounts. Sure. <laughs> or, or it would have said daddy in it. <laughs> well, I'm not saving money. I'm pretty much swapping. You do well, save money. You do save, save money. Maybe a dollar, a dollar you, twenty each yeah, You do save heaps of money, essentially. So, if you buy enough books... Uh, the postage is gonna, yeah, yeah. I sell a book for eight bucks, I'm buying it for four yeah. bucks. That four dollars I then use now, I can buy two comic books instead of one, is how it works. It's Drongo, gray man, not Drongo. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Anyway, um, I'm gonna start to wrap this one up, so I might do the round table and see what you guys got going, huh? You know, that's there we go. Let's, you got it right uh, now. Let's start with breaking news. Breaking news! You know I hate breaking news. What you got coming up on your channel? What you got coming up on your channel? In breaking news, um, what have I got? What have I got? What have I thought of so far? Um, yeah, I'll do a um, like a vlog sort of style thing for the uh, hobby and toy <laughs> fair thing. That was a bit of a waste of time today, but I'll still release that anyway. Uh, do some more of my artist series. Probably some more my statue collection, and I think that's about it for this week. Not nothing, nothing major this week. All right, and uh, Matt, uh, I was in bed laughing. I'm so proud that I made that that fart video appear on YouTube. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> I, I tell you, you were close. You were you were very close. You were very close. <laughs> It's, I got this one guy sending like video after video, and I'm like, "Don't worry, man. I promise you, I'll get around to do it." It's just I'm getting a lot of people sending videos, so I've got enough videos to do for a month. Mate, I, get the, I get the, I get the, I uh, get the. I know how to do it, mate. Ten second video. That's all you need. Ten fifteen seconds. I keep trying to pat, tell people, and they send me like one minute long videos. But yeah, I've got a couple of reviews coming up. I'm going to probably review Samurai. Going to review Griga. Giger. Um, if sorry. Giger. Giger. Sorry. Yeah. Shit. I can't even. Better get that right before I review it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if people aren't aware, I've got a uh, a little challenge I do every week where you, you can send in uh, two or three videos. Um, if you make me laugh, you'll win a twenty dollar Amazon gift card. So that happens every week. But yeah, mine's just whatever news is popping on for the week. I'll do a video talking about that, and then just book reviews. So yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, I just. I'm so glad. I'm so glad at the end you said. I'm so glad at the end that you said you nearly got me. So I was like, yes, he found it funny. <laughs> I, oh, I, I, <laughs> then you said I had to like. It was nearly one of those, you know, those laughs after like ten seconds after you watched the video. It was like one of those. It was like I, I nearly like, cracked. A friend of mine at work is like, man, you've watched that video a hundred times and you laugh just as hard now as the first <laughs> time. I just can't get enough of it. It's so funny. All right. Omnibo, what's going on in the Aussieverse? Uh, well, if you check out Aussieverse Comics and Collectors, we do a live uh, chat stream every Monday night at 7.30 Melbourne time where we discuss all of the latest comic book news. And we are currently doing a series called Through the MCU where we review every Marvel movie. We also have Sharif's Custom Corner, which is all of his custom-bound books that he makes. Um yeah, man, we're, we're trying to put out more content and expand and do a lot of other things. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Check us out. I did ask Mark tonight, but obviously he's in Sydney. I asked Sean Zaz84 to come tonight too, but I think he's working. So, But I would appreciate it if people watching subbed up all these three gentlemen, if you're not already, all their links are below. And, you know, show them that I've got some star power. You know, Every time I say subscribe to my boys, no one does it. And then other people like Legion I say, sub up Matt's he gets like 300 subs. I'll offer this to anyone from Simon. I'll, once I, I'm going to do a 500 subscriber giveaway. If you're a subscriber from Simon's account, uh, just when I do the giveaway, just say, "Hey, simple Simon sent me," and I'll give you an extra entry to the giveaway. Ooh, what's like that promotional code? It's <laughs> currently sponsored by Talking well, Pop. You can account. have a simple Simon promo code. <laughs> oh, I like that. You reminded me because I've been watching Mad Spidey lately, and he got to 300, and it's 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 slowly rising quickly past 300 and we're up to like i don't know 360 
And we've got a 400, uh, 400 subscriber giveaway of a $100 Amazon gift card. And I keep looking at Mad Spidey's subs and I'm like, mate, this guy's going to surpass me very, very soon, I'm telling you. And if he does, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> no, nah, it won't happen. I've, I've, I've plateaued again. No, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I have plateaued so months. many times. So yeah, many well, times it, I've plateaued. It, it happens though, man. You know, I'm telling you, yeah. you're going to get there. Yeah, I got stuck for a while. And then... I, I only, I only ever, you know, start rising when I start giving shit away. <laughs> I'm done with giveaways until I get to fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred, I'll do my next giveaway. But uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, I'm going to shut this one down. Thank you guys for hanging out. That was a good chat. I really enjoyed that. So maybe we should do this again. Find something else to talk about and things like that. So I Thanks had fun. Thanks. Yeah. And thanks, thank you for everyone in the chat for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Dragon, uh, Joker, Harley sketch cover. How about that? Huh? Huh? Um, yeah, we'll see. I didn't know Dragon could draw. I'll take a Deathstroke right. one. And Matt would like a Deathstroke one and a Spidey mm-hmm. Venom for the bottom two guys. <laughs> oh, I don't do, I don't yeah, do yeah. sketch covers. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll have your one. You, <laughs> you can have my one. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, Dragon, I will. Um, I, I will. I will buy that still because that would be a, a, a very funny cover. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you, everyone, and Thanks, have guys. a good night. And keep it simple. <laughs>